Hey, this is David, and there's a question I've been asked uh, pretty much daily for the last 30 plus years of me teaching guitar. And the question is, what scale should I use on this chord progression? You need to jam, you need to improvise, whether it's a piece you're writing or you're jamming with a friend. What's well, important to know the scale, and the answer might surprise you. You actually know the scale already if you know the chords. Now, before we get deep into this, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how it works. I want to invite you to check out my free music theory DNA course, which is going to speed up the process to implement all of this stuff really easily. It's none of the typical, you know, theory complex stuff that you may have tried before. It's a very easy method. It's really going to help you out. Okay, let's get started. So let's say that you've got a jam over a song. I don't know, we'll make something up. Maybe we have a, a G major, an A minor, and then we'll go to G and F. So that's our song, okay? So you've got to improvise over that. Well, you might be tempted to go the theory route, trying to assign these different chords to scale degrees. And that's a valid option but it requires from you to have a lot of baggage, uh, theory baggage, understand how to analyze chord progressions and all that stuff, and uh, there's an easier way. In essence, what we're trying to do is figure out the scale that is gonna work over all the chords. If we can match all the chords to a single scale, that's gonna be easier. And most of the time, that's gonna happen. When it doesn't, I'll tell you what to do in just a minute. But that's what we're trying to do. So instead of approaching it that way, instead of trying to figure out where these chords came from, we're gonna do it the other way around. We know that these, we're gonna assume that these chords are part of the same scale. So here's what we'll do. We'll take a look at each of these chords, one after the other, in any position you're comfortable with. So in this case, I'm using a G bar chord, that's what came to mind. I could have used an open G, I could have used this position. It really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna use this one right here. And then I've got an A minor. Okay, these two chords ideally are part of the same scale. So I'm gonna visualize on my fretboard, this chord shape, followed by this chord shape. And now I'm gonna blend both together. So now we have an area of the fretboard that is a little bit wider that includes those two chords. And I'm gonna start adding to that all the chords of my progression. Anytime I have a new chord, I'm gonna add it to that. So here I have an F major. So now we have a wide area of the fretboard covered. Within that wide area of the fretboard, we can see, we can visualize the G, the A minor, and then later on we had an F major. Basically, we are drawing on our fretboard something that kind of looks like a scale. It is a scale. By blending all these chords together, you're gonna start having the scale. Now, that leads us to a problem. The problem here is that that scale that we started drawing on the, the fictive, imaginative neck um, of the guitar doesn't necessarily look like a scale that you can use. You know, it's kind of all over the place. That's where knowing your intervals is gonna be super beneficial. And that's what that workshop that I told you about earlier is gonna help you with. But let's assume that you know that already. Let's go back to our fretboard. So you need to understand that each of the notes that are in that area of the fretboard that we, that we drew out by by blending these three chords together, each of these notes has a different function. The function of the note is given by the attraction it has with something else. See, a note by itself doesn't mean anything. If I play, for example, um, this note, third string, fifth, uh, fifth fret, that note on its own is nothing. But if I play this note against, say, an A, that note has a meaning. And that meaning is different from, say, this. Now it's attracted to something else, right? Different meaning. So a note by itself is nothing, but a note played against something else has a lot of different meanings.
that's where we're going to start making sense of that shape. We're going to assign a function to each of these notes. And functions in music are going to be called by numbers. A one, for example, also known as the root, the function of the root or the one is basically to attract everything else. Everything, all the other notes are going to have their meaning, their function, depending on how far or close they are to that root. The function of the third, for example, a three, that function is going to be to determine the nature of the musical element we're playing, major or minor. If it has a major third, well, it's a major element. A minor third, it's a minor element. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. All of that vocabulary is not that important. What's important here is that we started drawing, mapping out a shape, uh, something that looks like a scale. Now the next step, because that shape is maybe a little obscure, a little bit hard to play with, we're going to bring all of these notes that we have in the same area of the fretboard, a narrow area of the fretboard. And when I say narrow, it's probably a span of, you know, four frets, something that is reachable within reach. Now that begs the question, which area of the fretboard are we gonna, we're gonna use? It really doesn't matter. You could use any area of the fretboard you want. I'm gonna decide to use the one that is further on the right side. And when I say right side, it's the right side of the shape we started drawing, right? So it's gonna be this area right here, the area of the fretboard that corresponded to that A minor, A minor seven chord that we had there. That's the area of the fretboard I'm gonna concentrate in. So we already have some information in that zone of the fretboard. That's the information that corresponds to that A minor seven. Now, if we go to the, the G chord, for example, that we mapped out here, well, there are some notes that are kind of outside of that zone. So we're gonna bring them back in. For example, this note right here, that note, sixth string, third fret, is, is too far out of that zone. So I'm gonna eliminate that. I'm gonna see if I can bring it, bring the same pitch somewhere here, and in this case, we can't. So that's okay. Um, we're gonna go note by note. This one right here is already within reach. This one, it's within reach. This one, it's kind of within reach. We're gonna leave it there. This one, uh, this one right here, which is in that chord, second string, third fret, that's kind of outside of that reach. So I'm gonna see if I can find this pitch somewhere in this zone, and I can find it right here. If you don't know, you just fish around until you match it. So we have it right here on the third string, seventh fret. Perfect. And we're gonna do that note per note, chord by chord, and that's how we can draw out an area of the fretboard that is a narrow area. We chose that one. We could have chose any other zones. It doesn't matter. But we're basically blending together all the chords of our chord progression in the same zone of the fretboard. And that's how it works. Now we have a zone of the fretboard that is easier to manage. It looks most likely like something you've seen before. And in this case, it's going to look like a name minor scale. Within that A minor scale, you have other things you know, the minor pentatonic scale. So that means that um, from the chords, we figured out what scale to use. Let's give that a try. Here's the backing track. Same exact chord we played. This is our G, F. And I'm gonna use the area of the fretboard we just mapped out to improvise. There's another advantage here. Because we know the chords, and because we started with chords that are maybe outside of that zone of the fretboard, we can explore these outside notes by blending the shape we have. And as we're aware of the chords, we can land on some of the notes of the chords. Let's recap. You start with the chords. You visualize the chords on the fretboard. You bring these chords to the same area of the fretboard. That's going to start mapping out a scale. You're most likely going to recognize that scale position. If you don't, that's okay. You visualize it and you play the notes from what you came up with. Now, of course, you can 
add to that all the other baggage that you might have, and that's going to speed up the process. But in its simplest form, that's how it starts. I highly suggest you check out the free music theory DNA. It is completely free. It's already helped thousands of guitar players. And if you haven't taken that free workshop yet, you should do it right now. There's a link in the description of the video. You should sign up or just visit guitarinfusion.com and that'll take you straight to the workshop. Thanks for watching this. And if you want to stick around for another video, um, you can do that right here. I'll see you in the workshop.